What's up, guys? Part time gamer dad here. Uh, this is the new setup. I just did a little short about all of the new amiibos um, that we just added to the game room, and it's kind of shifted around a little bit. Um, this is my setup now. It used to be over here. Um, just to get myself some more space. Uh, I work from home most of the time, so this is the work backdrop. This is the YouTube gaming backdrop, so it'll be a little bit of a different look, uh, at least until we move into the new house. Uh, hopefully next year, um, at which point I will get a game room back. But you clicked on this video for a review of Across the Spider-Verse, so let's get into that. So first things first, is Across the Spider-Verse a good movie? Yeah, it's a great movie. I think that it is a very ambitious movie, uh, just like Into the Spider-Verse was. I think the key difference between Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse is that Into the Spider-Verse... Uh, felt like it knew more what it wanted to be singularly versus across the spider-verse felt more like let's take a bunch of really great ideas and use all of them without streamlining uh one to two things and making that the core story this is uh spoilers if you don't know this and, and i'll be really honest with you this whole video is probably going to be a little spoiler heavy so if you don't want any spoilers uh now's the time to click away but i feel like because this movie is technically a two-parter with this being part one and Beyond the Spider-Verse being uh, part three uh, of, of the full trilogy coming next year, uh, but part two of, of this um, one-two punch, really, I feel like they just did everything they wanted to do. And it creates a movie of a lot of different tones, uh, a lot of different pacings, and I think there's movies that are three hours long that feel a lot shorter, and then there are movies that feel three hour are three hours long and they feel like five hours and there are movies that are 90 minutes long that feel three hours this was a two and a half hour a half hour movie and it felt like a two and a half hour movie and i don't say that as a knock on the movie because it was incredibly entertaining but i think that by the end of it you feel very drained and it felt like there were several times the movie was ready to end only for it to have another 10 minutes, another 20 minutes, another 40 minutes left in the runtime. So I think there was just some conflicted pacing as a result of them trying to cram all of these ideas, all of these characters, all these stories into one movie. Um, I, something I said to my daughter who, who saw the movie with me last night on the way home was, I feel like um, we kind of live in the age of series and streaming and I feel like this might have been actually really well served being a series versus uh, a movie or two movies stretched out over the course of a year. All that being said, I am really excited for Beyond the Spider-Verse. Um, I think there is kind of a magic to these being movies still. I just think that if we had taken the movie aspect away and made a series, it would have given more time to flesh all of these plot lines and these characters out a little bit more. Quite honestly, I felt like I was watching a series of Spider-Man episodes. But now let's talk about um, what I think are the movie's biggest strengths, which are the art and animation style, as well as the actors. And I think, um, let's start with the actors, because I, I think that's an easier thing to identify as. Look at the cast, man. Shameik Moore, uh, Haley Steinfeld. Um, you have Oscar Isaac in this doing an incredible job as Miguel. Uh, O'Hara um, and it's just it's just carrying over from the first movie in a lot of ways and I, I don't want to spoil too much but like some of the characters return some of them don't um, not fully at least and I think what's interesting is we see just a lot of a lot of amazing um, work done by these actors in a way that really gives life to these characters that are in an animated form that you just don't see um as fully realized in a lot of animations and i think we live quite honestly in probably the most spoiled um time in in media and entertainment history i think we all know that but in terms of animation we've come so far and i think a lot of um actors really just lean on the animation to tell the story and to tell um the the characterizations of the roles they're playing and uh, to push that that narrative forward i feel like in this movie everybody held their own and they really brought it and it really is what held the movie together all, um all throughout the the long run time and of course you can't talk about into the spider-verse across the spider-verse and i'm anticipating beyond the spider-verse without addressing the incredible animation 
and art uh, done by the, the probably the most talented people in uh, the movie industry today, which are these um, artists and illustrators and uh, folks who edit and design. And it's just incredible. And you're just, you're watching everything you could have ever imagined, like a comic book coming to life in front of you. That's what this movie is. I have one issue, as did my daughter, ironically. Um, the scenes where we're in, uh, again, spoilers. Uh, if you're still here, I anticipate you're okay with this. Uh, we, we start off the movie in Gwen's, uh, Spider-Gwen's world. And I really feel like just some of the the backdrops and the way that colors were alternating so frequently as we shifted, like, shot, and then it was a blue background, you cut to somebody else, go back to that original person, now it's a red background, cut away, cut back, now it's... Uh, a purple background it, it was just distracting and it especially with the story kind of hinging around being able to jump between universes and there always being like something happening in the background that indicates to you that that's about to happen it, it really confused me as a viewer and my daughter and so um granted i, I haven't really read the spider gwen comic so maybe that's in line and it probably is with those artistic choices but i don't think it works in the context of the movie um similarly when the, you go back to that world later they did it again and it just didn't work for me but that's a really small criticism and that just doesn't work for me some people could really enjoy that um i thought overall art style art animation illustration um all of the design of the the movie and the way that it felt so big yet at moments it felt so intimate and that, that really is a testament to the way that the movie is animated uh, was really incredible the other thing i want to address is the story um and not so much the story as the script um the dialogue for the most part was super tight uh it was funny genuinely funny um but again with some of the pacing issues i think some of it came down to dialogue um there was a scene between gwen and miles parents and uh, both my daughter she's actually the one who brought it up uh and i felt that it wasn't authentic it, the reaction that the parents had in that moment didn't seem very genuine and the way how quickly the conversation was resolved and how and the response that the parents had towards the end of that conversation um just just didn't seem in line with their characters or with how um uh, any kind of conversation would go between those characters in that dynamic and so i think in those moments it kind of took me out of it a little bit um which you don't want because it's already uh it's a superhero movie it's animated like we're all in or we're not and when we're not it's really stark contrast um so i think that would be you know my other knock against the movie but overall tight script it's just in those really personal moments you don't want to lose um the connection i think we we lost a little bit of that in those moments but then where does that leave this movie in the grand scope of spider-man movies in general i recently did a short on this channel ranking all the spider-man movies and just the spider-man movies not like venom and or morbius or anything that um spider-man was a bit player in like uh well not a bit player but just like the ensemble movies like avengers in game and infinity war and um i have to figure out where i i would scale this so quite honestly um I, in my top four were spider-man 2 at number one into the spider-verse at two no way home at three and spider-man uh, 2002 at number four um and i think this is definitely a top five movie the more i think about it i think it's a top three movie so i would actually put it in third place ahead of no way home and behind into the spider-verse a lot of the issues that this movie has are also issues that no way home had right the first half of the movie um kind of weak if we're being honest uh the story wasn't really strong but the payoff in the ending uh was great and i feel like that's kind of um the flow of this movie as well right like everything leading up to maybe the last 20 minutes um actually the last five for me the last five minutes of this movie were incredibly epic i'm very excited for the next movie because of the end of this movie um but i think that narratively speaking and cohesion and you know not streamlining it the way that something like into the spider-verse was i think hurt it so i put it in third still an incredibly strong movie i would say this is mm, 
mm, I'm gonna give it a, mm, it's a nine it's a nine something maybe I so I give Spider-Man 2 a 10 out of 10 I give Into the Spider-Verse a 10 out of 10 I'm gonna give this one based on the merit of the animation based on the merit of the acting the relatively tight script and I understand what they're going for I just think that they gave us too much I'm gonna give it a 9.5 um the the misses were small misses um i I, just for me as a viewer and as a longtime superhero especially spider-man fan and going into this with all the hype and all the noise around it um i I just can't give it that 10 and i and i can't say it's i can't say it's even better than into the spider-verse i could rewatch that movie over and over and over and over i can't watch i don't know if i'd be able to watch this as frequently um so 9.5 Hey, that's still a really good score. And uh, honestly, I think that's in line with, you know, pretty much like uh, the number of reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes. I think that's sitting at 96, audience score sitting at 96. So I think I'm in line. I think I just have a little bit more of a, I, I, I want to get nitpicky because um, these are, this is a character we all love so much, Spider-Man in general. Um, but Miles Morales is over the last 12 years. Uh, since debuting in comics um, has been such a fun character i played the game he's very enjoyable i just want to see them uh just pit, you know course correct a little bit in beyond the spider-verse if they could do that i really think we're gonna have a 10 out of 10 on our hands next so thank you guys so much for watching the video let me know in the comments your feelings on the movie do you give it a 9.5 out of 10 do you give it a 10 out of 10 do you give it a 7 out of 10 maybe you give it a 4 out of 10 maybe you hate it if you're crazy um or but that's just your opinion so i respect that i like the video make sure you guys subscribe uh let me know what you think about the new game room layout um and i will see you guys very soon